So on August 1st, 2022, India's 5G Spectrum auction got concluded and we sold the Spectrum for roughly 1.5 lakh crore. From auctions, the biggest airwave auctions in India ended and uh, a record of over 1.5 lakh crore worth of Spectrum has been sold. The figure of 1.5 lakh crore is very interesting because if you go back to 2007-2008 time, what you would have noticed from the news is that India's 2G Spectrum, which is an inferior version of 5G Spectrum, that 2G Spectrum had a value of roughly 1.73 lakh crore. Now, this computation was done by the Comptroller and Auditor General of India, which is also called as CAG. Mr. Vinod Rai, who is an ex-IOS officer, was leading the charge back then. And he estimated that the price of 2G in India was roughly 1.73 lakh crore. Now, we are in 2022 and we are selling off the spectrum at 1.5 lakh crore. 5G is a bigger spectrum. So, ideally, the price of the spectrum should have been bigger. So, is 5G a scam too? And more importantly, Reliance which has been the major beneficiary of purchasing this 5G Spectrum. Are they going to benefit massively by purchasing this Spectrum or will their business tank? I will present a complete analysis by telling you the historic facts, figures and what the business outlook of Reliance would look like. If you understand this case study, you would understand a lot about the telecom industry in India and whether or not it might be a sensible move to purchase something like Reliance or not. Seven days of bidding through 40 rounds the day-to-day -day hearing in the 2G scam in which former telecom minister A. Raja was acquitted. So in order to understand the 5G spectrum, it is very important for us to understand a little bit of history about the 2G spectrum scam that happened in India. Now the year was 2007 and India of 2007 looked very, very different from India of 2022. More specifically, the internet penetration rate in India back in 2007 was only 4%. So there has been a massive growth in terms of internet penetration in India. People have started using the internet on their phone where they watch videos like this and press the like button. They also go and book Ola Uber apps, use a bunch of fintech apps. So we cannot think about surviving without using internet these days. But back in 2007, the internet penetration was India in very low, which meant that this was a massive opportunity for telecom companies to come in and start creating data highways. In this entire mumbo jumbo, if we take a look at the political landscape in India, back then there was UPA government which was a cobbled up government which was made up of different different parties and one party emerged from Tamil Nadu which was called as DMK. It has the second number of highest seats in the Indian parliament at that point in time and a minister from that party was appointed who became India's telecom minister. His name was A. Raja. So Mr. A. Raja was given the complex task of selling India's data highways which were also called as spectrum. So just a side note here what you can do with a spectrum. This is what a spectrum looks like. Basically whatever radio communication you are doing, whatever telecom communication you are doing, whatever internet highways that you are building, they all operate on radio frequencies. So you could consider a spectrum to be an airwave, which is considered to be a country's natural resources. There is only a fixed amount of airwave that can be used for communication. And this is a critical resource for any government. So Mr. A. Raja was tasked with a very important mandate of allocating this spectrum. More specifically, he undertook the auctioning of this spectrum. Now there are different different processes of auctioning the spectrum. For example, bids can be called and the spectrum could be allocated to the highest bidder. On the flip side, a base price can be decided and the spectrum can be allocated on first come first serve basis. So Mr. A. Raja ended up going with the first come first serve basis of allocating the spectrum. So in this entire episode, Mr. A. Raja kept on shifting the application date. Now this was on first come first serve basis. So this raised a lot of eyebrows. In fact, the Prime Minister of India wrote to Mr. A. Raja saying that, that hey, you know what, please be impartial, fair in terms of allocating this spectrum. He also received a lot of recommendations from Ministry of Finance that he decided to ignore. This is what the case of the facts tell us. So given all this hoopla, this case caught a lot of public attention and a scrutiny was done as to which companies got allocated the spectrum. And a lot of irregularities were found out. Let me quote two specific examples. So the first example is about a company called as Unitech, which ended up procuring 22 licenses. So in total, I think there were roughly 122 licenses that were to be given and 22 were procured by a company called as Unitech, which paid roughly $230 million. And within a few months, it sold roughly 60% of these licenses to a company called as Telenor at a profit of roughly 275%. On another instance, there was a company called as Swan Telecom and it ended up getting a lot of licenses too. And as per CBI, Swan Telecom was just a front for Reliance to procure these licenses. Back then, Reliance Communication was led by Mr. Anil Ammani. 
So anyways, the clock moved on and all these irregularities came into the forefront. And by 2012, Supreme Court decided to cancel all the licenses. This led to a massive shakeup. A lot of businesses lost a lot of money. A lot of international telecom players who wanted to set up shop in India, they wound their shop and went away and have not returned to India since then. 2014 was when Mr. Narendra Modi ended up forming his government on the back of bringing in clean governance and rooting out a corrupt government. To cut the long story short, Congress was thrown out and Mr. Rahul Gandhi went in somewhat of an exile. But there is a twist to this story that by 2017, a special court found out that hey, all the evidences have been cooked up and I'm quoting the judge from here, I have absolutely no hesitation in holding that prosecution has miserably failed to prove any charge against any of the accused made in this well choreographed charge sheet. So he said that hey, this entire case is well choreographed, that's it. And he acquitted all 35 accused. Now I'm not qualified enough to comment on the judgment, neither I will take any sides, but there is a massive implication for whatever is happening in 2022 right now. In 2022, our government is selling off the 5G auction and Mr. A. Raja is bringing forth the charge that hey, you know what? 2G auction, you pitted at 1.75 lakh crore loss to the exchequer. And here you yourself are selling that spectrum at 1.5 lakh crore. So how is this right? So the current telecom minister, Mr. Ashwini Kumar, he says that this type of stuff coming from an ex-telecom minister is really weird. Why? Because here is the math that the 1.5 lakh crore spectrum allocation that has been done so far, it is just part allocation as of now. There is 2.8 lakh crore more left to be allocated. So if you compute 1.5 lakh crore plus 2.8 lakh crore, then how much is the total figure? It will come out to be roughly 4.3, 4.4 lakh crore. But here is the retort that as per government's earlier computations, this entire spectrum was supposed to be 5 lakh crore worth. So the total is coming out to be roughly 4.3, 4.4 lakh crore. So there roughly seems to be a 60,000 crore deficit, which many people are not speaking about. So is this really a scam? Is this not really a scam? This is for the auditors to find out. Me, as a finance commentator, I'm more interested in looking at what lies ahead. So right now, Reliance has taken a very big step forward in terms of reworking their business strategy. And this can prove to be a game changer for Reliance. So here is how the story is likely to play out. So right now, if you check, the internet data rates are very low in India. In fact, compared to majority of the Western countries and several other different parts of the world, we have one of the cheapest data rates out there. So whoever controls the spectrum going forward, it gives them a massive opportunity to do what? To number one, increase these prices subsequently because a price increase would be justifiable. Why? Because right now the internet rates in India are very, very low to begin with. If they increase the prices, they are likely to increase something called as ARPU. What is ARPU? It is called as average revenue per user. So now how Reliance will be able to increase its ARPU going forward, I will explain that in very easy to understand language. And this plan simply consists of three steps. So step one involves acquiring the infrastructure at the lowest possible cost. So Reliance has been able to acquire this 5G spectrum or a part of this 5G spectrum at reserve prices. So they are not paying any massive premium per se. They have been able to procure this spectrum at reasonable enough prices. The second step involves optimizing for your variable cost. So to this end, if we look at the procurement done by Reliance, what they are trying to do is that they are trying to acquire frequencies in this 5G spectrum in that 700 megahertz range. Now, there are several advantages associated with procuring this 700 megahertz band. What are the advantages? I'm listing some things out here. You can go and read it. But net net, what it simply means is that there is better internet penetration in high density area or heavily populated area. And the efficiency of the internet is better if you are using that 700 megahertz range. Now, I'm not a tech expert, so of course. So a little bit of my understanding might be off here. But to cut the long story short, this 700 megahertz range is a premium band that they have been able to acquire. Now, as per several telecom analysts, now, Reliance has a spectrum of bands that they can use together, infuse together, and they can drive synergies by owning all these different spectrums. And this is where their 700 megahertz procurement strategy comes into the picture. It is said that going forward, the gaming ecosystem will improve in India. A lot of gamers will come onto the platform. Reliance will benefit from this macro change. They can integrate their retail march and increase more digital penetration. So there are a host of different synergies and advantages that procuring this 700 megahertz band allows them. So this brings us to the third part of the strategy which has to do with the expansion plan and capturing the market. 
so here what reliance is going to do is that they are going to get more into gaming they are already partners with a bunch of different international tech companies like facebook google silver league partners has invested in reliance so under their reliance geo brand they are set for market domination now it has been estimated that due to this procurement of spectrum by reliance airtel will lose 2 to 3% of its market share now guess what if a telecom monopoly is getting created in india then what is going to happen to the prices that i had earlier shown you and started the story with the prices are going to get increased yes one could counter the argument by saying that you know what the telecom regulatory authority of india will look into it etc etc but this is what the genius of building a telecom monopoly is that in india right now the first phase of internet has been solved that the internet penetration is already reaching roughly 50% going forward it will continue to rise if one company comes create a monopoly guess what they are going to do they are going to jack up the prices which are low as of now and with that we are looking at a dominance of at least a decade by reliance or reliance geo now of course there are a lot of variables which are left which needs to be aligned together in order for reliance to become that telecom monopoly but they seem to be on the right track does that mean that you should go and invest your money in reliance what is it that you should be doing so these are very early stages of this business move because one could argue that reliance might sell some of this spectrum to airtel or airtel might procure some of this spectrum from other sources all this remains to be seen but the battleground has been created and if airtel does not respond effectively it is almost given that reliance will take an inassailable lead i hope you enjoyed this case study let me know in the comment box and i will see you soon